hey guys welcome back to the channel um all right so uh this is the start of a new mini series where we are going to be working on setting up a galera cluster reference architecture using the mariadb 10.5 enterprise server together with the max scale 2.5 of course um so over the past few years um many customers have asked for a reference architecture where they want to set up a galera cluster on or a single data center maybe or even even on a multi data center setup uh, because galera cluster natively uses a synchronous replication setup and it becomes very challenging when you want to use galera cluster on a multiple data center setup of course multiple data center is highly desirable because uh, they still want to be able to or customers still want to be able to access their data through their app um, even if the disaster happens or even if their data center goes offline so they still have the data available on, a, on another data center of course that's the point of having multiple data center right so yeah so it becomes very challenging because of the uh, native synchronous application support so if the latency between the two data center is is not good enough uh, a galera cluster will suffer very badly right so your application will suffer from performance issues and from from a uh, poor transition per second issues um, so that is what this this uh, this set of tutorials or this set of videos is going to be about to set up a reference architecture where uh, we can use multiple data centers and um, and see what are the options available for us to set up a galera cluster so that we can still get better transaction per second and still get uh, better data availability even if a disaster happens so the first thing that we're going to see is uh, basically a single cluster on a single data center right so that's the first thing that we want to go for um, so the next video the next couple of video is going to be setting up a galera cluster uh, with a three node of course uh, using its native synchronous replication of course and with one max scale server uh, that is going to be able to do read write splitting for your cluster able to handle your your database uh, database failovers of course max scale will not handle the database failover because galera handles that failover on their own internally but max scale will be able to basically uh, select select a primary and a, and a replica node automatically uh, depending on whichever node is available so that 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 is done seamlessly by the max scale server itself uh, and then based on the architecture we can see that uh, the max scale will send your read and write queries to one node and um, the other nodes will be getting your read only queries or or you select queries basically um, so the architecture for a multiple max scale basically is that you normally have a virtual ip or a load balancer sitting on top of your max scale server between your apps and your max scale servers and then your apps basically connect to the load balancer on the port uh, that is configured for the max scale rewrite service and uh, the load balancer will basically just simply distribute uh, the incoming traffic across these two nodes if you are using a virtual IP, of course, the virtual IP will be held by one of these max scale servers, and then only one max scale will be used at any given time. Uh, but with the with a normal load balancer like F5 or something else, we can make use of both max scale servers potentially by doing a round robin of of uh, incoming traffic, basically. Um, so uh, in this in this set of videos, we are going to be setting up only one max scale server because we don't want to make it overly complicated. But um, but setting up a second max scale server for a Galera cluster is very very simple. So whatever you do for the for the first setup, you basically just duplicate that config file on the second max scale server, and then you are already good to go. So you just need to configure your load balancer. Uh, that is of course not a part of uh, MariaDB configuration or MariaDB setup itself. So you just need to configure your 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 load balancer to be able to talk to both max scale servers and then max scale will take care of the rest right all right uh, so our setup is going to be using gtids and binary logs bin logs um, that is that is going to be very important when we extend this cluster or this setup uh, to multiple data centers so that's what we are going to use we are going to be using uh, the native mariadb bin logs on a galera cluster because galera by default doesn't really need bin logs but the, the setup that we are trying to achieve that we are going to see in the next slide requires bin logs and a consistent gtid so that consistent gtid is available with the 10.5 enterprise server galera cluster all right so um, 
I know this looks a bit complicated and a bit um, overwhelming at, at start but if you look closely then you will see that this picture and this picture is is identical to this single setup right so once we know how to set this environment up uh, this is basically just simply extending on top of that config right so we just so what we need to do is we need to set up one environment here and then again set up another similar same environment exactly the same environment on the second data center and the only additional thing that we need to do is to set up a bin log router in these two max scale servers right and then uh, simply uh, simply point one of these galera nodes to that max scale server to replicate data from asynchronously right so so galera one of these galera nodes will be able to get uh, the bin logs transition bin logs from this max scale server as a bin log router and uh, max scale on this data center will basically get those bin logs from these three three nodes so it, the the super cool thing is that regardless of which node is available and which node is not available max scale will be able to automatically pick up the data that is needed by this this galera node for replication right so that's a super super cool cool thing the same exact setup is done here on these two max scale servers where we enable bin log server and then we configure these three nodes for bin log uh, bin log collection right so binary log collection and then we set up this this one of these nodes as a slave or as a replica to this max scale so max scale will look at this node as a master or a primary server and then start getting data replicated to this node so all these thing if you if you think of about it now you will see that it's very simple to do uh, nothing overly complicated the picture of course looks a bit overwhelming but when we see the actual setup is is quite simple because this one and this one we have already done in the previous sessions already like we know how to set up a three node glare cluster right so after when you get to this point you will know already how to set up a glare cluster of a three node uh, with with one or two max scale servers we just need to be able to configure a bin log router that's all and of course uh, configure uh, one of the galera nodes as a slave to this max scale server that's all there is and then it will start replicating and then once we do the setup we will al already be enabling the gtids and the bin logs and everything that is required for this setup to work so we would have already done all that in this in this setup itself right so you don't need to know or do anything additional other than just setting up the bin logs and setting up this node as a slave all right so the 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 only downside of this setup is that um, because we are using asynchronous replication to synchronize two independent galera clusters um, we cannot be using both sides in an active mode meaning we cannot be submitting transactions from both of these sides right so that's something important to take note of so this setup is basically active and passive so once this data center goes down then we can switch over to the other side and then start using this cluster um, in an active mode meaning we can start submitting transactions and whatever you want to do we can do that here and then this max cell will be able to collect all the bin logs that have been uh, done here all the transactions that have been done here and then once this site comes back online uh, thanks to this replication uh, the data will start flowing or whatever new data has been uh, submitted here will start flowing to this side of the uh, data center and then your your cluster will eventually be in sync with this side again and then we can continue to work on this environment one more time right uh, that's the only thing that we need to know of that this is an active passive setup and then we cannot use both sides at the same time but the benefit of this setup is because normally the latency between the two data centers is not ideal uh, because the latency in within the data center is very good is because it's a is a high performance setup high performance network setup with maybe 10 gigabits or uh, 100 gigabit setup but across data center is generally a slower network it's not the the fast network uh, because it's very expensive of course because this this network may be uh, many miles away from from this data center so that's why uh, a uh, synchronous application is not generally possible so that's why this asynchronous application will take care of th the synchronization between the two data center while um, while maintaining high transition per second on this environment or this environment whichever is the active one at that particular time so this asynchronous application is the benefit here in this architecture where it doesn't bog down your 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 application or your environment uh, because of a synchronous behavior requirement right so that's the positive point all right so moving on to the third architecture 
uh, this is basically similar to what we have seen before but much simpler right so uh, this one if you know how to set up the galera cluster this is basically the same thing there's nothing special about this cluster uh, it's just simply instead of three node we are just configuring four node galera cluster so this four node is basically and this is also called a stretched galera cluster so we are stretching uh, one cluster across two data center this kind of a setup uh, using two data centers is recommended to have two nodes on each data center instead of three nodes because um, your setup um, because if you have a, if you have three nodes on each data center uh, that would mean that you have total six nodes so your replication will uh, will slow down of course um, so that's something that we want to take care of and we don't want that to happen um, so that is why uh, two node cluster and two node two node two node and two node here and this all becomes one big galera cluster um, the positive of this is that this is an active active setup where we can read and write on both sides right so you don't need to worry about um, failing over or whatnot so both of these sites are active you can do read and write on both data centers but uh, latency can be a problem um, we cannot get very high transition for transition per second if your network latency is not um, is not good enough for the cluster because having synchronous replication it will need um, very high throughput across the cluster right so that that's something to take care of or to take note of uh, then the other thing you might have noticed is that we have a weightage defined for these two nodes as two weightage weightage of two and the weightage is defined as one so having two weightage uh, because we are not using odd numbers uh, because generally uh, galera uh, does require odd numbers uh, in the cluster because we have um, having two data centers we cannot possibly achieve odd numbers across the data centers right uh, we cannot have three nodes here and two nodes here that will still be a bad idea so that's why we are playing with weightage to to make this data center a primary data center because this has higher weightage and the quorum will be used uh, by these two meaning quorum will be done deciding th these two nodes will be the deciding factors when it comes to quorum based decisions and the weightage over here is lower so that means that this data this data center can go down um, and then your cluster will still continue to work and even your one node from here can go down your primary data center as long as one node in the primary data center is alive the cluster will still continue to work the only problem will be when both of these nodes go down abruptly uh, without a proper shutdown that is when the secondary data center will go into an offline mode meaning your app will not be able to read or write from these two nodes so that is something to take note of so that is the only way only situation where we need to have some manual intervention and then uh, we will have to basically promote these two nodes as a primary uh, Galera nodes and uh, once these two side these two nodes comes back online they will automatically rejoin the cluster and then these two will take the primary role automatically because they have the higher weightage and then they will rep continue to replicate from where where it all stopped right all right so i think uh, that's all there is for this video and i hope um, this looks interesting and then we are going to be setting up these three environments in in the many many videos to come in the next uh, few weeks um, or maybe in the next few days because uh, if I have some time I probably might record all these videos um, in in a single session right so hopefully that is the case and then um, I will be uploading them and then I also have a github link that that basically covers this architecture in detail uh, step by step uh, I will also put a link to that readme file in this videos when I upload them and um, hope you guys enjoyed these sessions and uh, see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.